Hello everyone. Um, I wanted to tell a story today uh, that again comes from India. Um, this one features a variety of folks in it. Um, our protagonists, you could say, are Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. Um, the three really big gods of, of Hinduism. Here in the West, we tend to um, be reductionist, <laughs> as we are with most things, but um, we tend to be reductionist about their roles. We tend to identify Brahma as the creator god, Vishnu as the preserver god, and Shiva as the destroyer god. They're much more complicated than that, uh, and therefore much more interesting. Um, you know, Shiva might be a destroyer, yes, but without that destruction, we get no creation, so we could say that he's a creator as well. Um, you know, Vishnu is a preserver, and I maintain a trickster figure, um, because in order to keep things rolling in our lives, we have to very often step outside of what might be considered, from an objective perspective, complete right. Um, Brahma, the creator god, you know, um, <laughs> once got in a bit of uh, trouble with Shiva, um, but that's another story. <clears throat> this one in particular, those three are kind of sitting around their corner of the universe and they're, they're bored because the world hasn't, you know, they haven't created the world yet. Uh, they don't really quite know exactly how they want to do it. They're thinking about it. It's not the right time yet. And they're, they're just feeling um, ennui. <laughs> and so the great goddess, Devi, notices from afar their boredom and she decides to <clears throat> take them on a little field trip. And so this magical uh, flying machine, you know, we could call it a, um, you know, a, a, a goddess flying saucer, comes by and <clears throat> Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva get into it and whoosh, off they go. And they're traveling through the universe and all of a sudden they see an earth. They see the planet that they have planned to create themselves. And they look at it, and there are all the animals on it that they had planned to create, and the, the features of the landscape that they had planned to create, and that they talked about, the uh, humanity, all of it's there. And then they look closer still, and they see another version of Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. They see versions of themselves tending to this other earth that they had not yet created, so they thought. <clears throat> and they, they look at each other, and they say, who, who are you? Who am I? What is going on? The flying saucer continues, the Devi mobile, and they uh, go further and they see, you know, uh, the gods of uh, the ocean, Varuna, and they see Indra, a god of lightning and storms, and they, they see Yama, the god of death. They see all these other gods, <clears throat> different versions of the very gods that they have been thinking about. And finally, the, uh, the flying saucer takes them up to some other realm altogether. <clears throat> and they get out of the flying saucer, and they look, and there she is, the goddess, the great mother. And it's Vishnu who recognizes her and uh, says, oh, this is, this is the great goddess, everybody down. <laughs> so they do a full prostration. <clears throat> and when they get up, they've been transformed into women. And they walk closer to the Great Mother, and she's so beautiful. It's just overwhelming. They're in complete ecstasy. And she's huge, and they're kind of on level with her toe, with her big toe, and they look into the toenail of her big toe, and inside of that toenail are whirling galaxies, suns, planets, stars, Vishnus, Brahmas, Shivas, humanities, tigers, I mean, all kinds of things all in the toenail of her big toe. They're done. The big three, Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva, they, lay, they lie down on the earth and they laud her with her thousand names for millennia to come. I love this story for a lot of reasons. One, there's something absolutely charming and sweet about it. I love that, you know, they're whisked away in this, in this magical flying saucer. 
And then, of course, it immediately becomes very deep when they see the thing they had thought they were going to create, and they see themselves, suggesting that they are one of many. Then, of course, when they get to, you know, the world of Devi, and they get out of the flying saucer, and then they're transformed into women. They have to leave the male part of themselves behind in order to fully have the vision of her. This is not uncommon in stories. There's a lot of gender uh, flip-flopping and play in stories. Uh, you know, I think in particular of the story of Kibele, who, um, you know, one of her, um, a, a love interest of hers, um, actually castrates himself. I think I mentioned this in um, one of the earlier talks. But, um, you know, he must cut off, he must cut himself off from uh, the masculine world in order to have a certain kind of relationship with her. There is the union that comes from the, uh, what we could call the hieros gamos, the, the uh, great right of male and female coming together physically uh, in sexual consummation. And then there is the kind of union where you are the same. So these three gods of, of uh, the various powers of creation uh, must cut themselves off from that. Um, so they have that moment. And then, of course, there's the big moment when they look into this teeny part of her and inside of it is, you know, galaxies and universes and all manner of, of expressions of, the ma of manifestation. Um, I think this story is a really wonderful one to contemplate for humility, which in our age, I imagine in any age, but in our age and in a Western culture, I think is very hard to uh, understand, but I think by contemplating the story we can come into some better relationship with our actual place in the universe. Look, whether or not you believe there's a Mahadevi, there's a great goddess out there somewhere and there are galaxies whirling in her toe is irrelevant. What does the story say to you? It says that you, me, are infinitesimal specks in the vastness that is this manifested universe. And I think that can be comforting, especially in times that are filled with crises, um, to be able to recognize that there's a much larger picture and that regardless of how things feel in the moment, sometimes we can get a flash that this is all really tiny and probably bland potatoes and uh, even for that moment, we can have a breath. And then we might get right back into the fray, but still there's that recognition which can make all the difference. So uh, I hope everyone is well. I hope you're all taking care of yourselves, um, and we'll talk again soon. Bye.